The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. And now, a word of interest to smokers. For years, you've heard talk, double talk, words about noses, words about throats, empty promises. Cigarette advertising is filled with them. Now, this smoke screen of double talk is swept away by facts, not claims, facts. The facts are that Lucky's fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco goes into a cigarette that's made better, that's fully packed that has no annoying loose ends to spoil the taste. A cigarette that's made better in every way. Yes, the facts are that Lucky Strike, by a wide margin, is the best made of all five principal brands of cigarettes. Facts proven by a month-after-month quality comparison, based on tests certified to be impartial, fair, and identical. And these tests, these facts, are verified by leading laboratory consultants. For example... Foster D. Snell, Incorporated of New York City, reports... In our opinion, the properties measured are all important factors affecting the taste of cigarette smoke. We conclude that Lucky Strike is the best made of the five major brands. Yes, Lucky's taste better. Always so mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh. With better taste in every puff. So prove to yourself the proven facts. Don't be misled by the smoke screen of claims made by other cigarettes. Remember the facts and enjoy really fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco in the cigarette that tops all five principal brands for quality. The cigarette that tastes better. Lucky Strike. Try a carton today. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Polaris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, here it is Sunday again. So let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. But we've sure got suspense. <laughs> Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny's residence, star of stage, screen, radio, and is beginning to get a feeling of security in television. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Susie. Huh? Oh no, honey, I can't get away today. Mr. Benny gave me yesterday off. Where'd I go? No place. He wouldn't let me leave. I had him blitzed on four games. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'll, I'll talk to you later, Susie. Goodbye. Good morning, Rochester. Good morning, boss. How'd you do at the wedding last night? Oh, it was... A... Wait a minute. Rochester, how'd you know I went to a wedding? Well, I overheard you on the phone last night, and you were dickering about the price. <laughs> well, how'd you know I played my violin at a wedding? Well, for three bucks, I knew it wasn't the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> All right, all right. I'll never take that kind of a job again. What a wedding. What people. I not only got home at four o'clock in the morning, but I haven't even got the three bucks. Why? What happened? While I was kissing the bride, the groom picked my pocket. <laughs> but maybe he needed it. Anyway, Rochester. Rochester, who's at the piano playing my song? I don't know. Well, let's go see. Look, it's Polly. <laughs> Polly, you play Daddy's song on the piano. She can sing it, too. She can sing it. When you say, I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. <laughs> when you ask me to forgive you, I'll return. <laughs> <laughs> Rochester. She knows the words and music perfectly. Where'd she see a copy of my song? I lined the bottom of her cage with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for 
heaven's sake. I thought you always covered the bottom of Polly's cage with the funny papers. I had to stop. Little orphan Annie had her in tears. <laughs> well, that's about the silliest. Rochester, put Polly back in her cage. I'll get the door. Like the swallows at Serrano, return to Capistrano for you. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. Jack, I've got to tell you the cutest thing that happened on my way over here. What? What was it? Well, it was a nice day, and I thought I'd walk. Uh -huh. And as I came down Wilshire Boulevard, I was standing on the curb waiting for the traffic. Uh -huh. When a little fellow came up to me and said, May I help you across the street? Uh-huh. And Jackie was so cute I couldn't refuse. I gave my hand, and we walked across. Then we got to the other side, he kissed me. Oh, that's cute. This little boy kissed you? What little boy? He's a jockey at Santa Anita. <laughs> no. I had to lift them up yet. <laughs> well, Mary, that'll teach you to... Oh, for heaven's sake, there's that bird again. Uh, Jack, isn't that your song? Yeah, Polly learned how to play my song on the piano. She won't stay in her cage. Rochester, get Polly back in her cage. Okay. Come on, get away from the piano. <coughs> Come on, get away from the piano. Si, sí, senor. <laughs> now she thinks she's Hosea Turby. <laughs> Sometimes that bird doesn't... I'll answer it, Rochester. Oh, how do you do, sir? Would you like to buy some magazines? Dennis. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Would you like to buy some magazines? I've got Look, Colliers, and Red Book. Dennis, how come you're selling magazines? Well, my father is out of work, my brother is laid up with a broken leg, and my sister's husband ran away and left her with two starving children. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dennis, did your father lose his job? No. And your brother, he broke his leg? No. And your sister's husband ran off... Dennis, you haven't got a sister, have you? No. <laughs> then why did you tell me such a story? If you were sympathetic instead of nosy, you'd buy a magazine. <laughs> now look, Dennis. Jack, who's out there? One of the happiness boys. <laughs> look, Dennis, as long as you stop by, how about coming in and let me hear the song you're going to do on the program? Okay. Hello, Dennis. Want to buy a magazine? No, she doesn't want to buy a magazine. And I don't want to hear another word about magazines. Now, what song are you going to sing? Let me call your sweetheart. <laughs> now, cut that out! <laughs> Just sing your song, Let Me Call Your Sweetheart. <laughs> See, the snowman was a jolly, happy soul With a corncob pipe and a button nose And two eyes made out of coal Frosty, the snowman is a fairy tale, they say He was made of snow, but the children know How he came to life one day There must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found for when they placed it on his head he began to dance around frosty the snowman was alive as he could be and the children say he could laugh and play just the same as you and me Frosty the snowman knew the sun was hot that day So he said, let's run and have some fun Now before I melt away Down to the village With a broomstick in my hand Let's run here and there all around the square Play and catch me if you can He led them down the streets of town Right to the traffic cop And he only paused a moment When he heard him holler, stop! Frosty the snowman had to hurry on his way 
But he waved goodbye saying, don't you cry, I'll be back again someday. I'll be back again someday. Very, very good, Dennis. You sang that beautifully. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what do you mean, oh, yeah? You're just trying to be nice to me because you didn't buy a magazine. <laughs> Look, Dennis, I'm not trying to be nice to you. And as far as the magazines are concerned, you didn't... Rochester! Rochester, get Polly back in her cage. Okay, come on, Polly, get away from that piano. <laughs> I said get away from that piano! <laughs> Come on now! <laughs> Rochester, what was that? Jose just laid an egg! <laughs> an egg? Did you catch it? Like the swallows at Serrano is in the frying panel! <laughs> Well, good, good. <laughs> you know, Mary, you won't believe this. Hello, but... anybody home? Huh? Oh, hello, Phil. We're in the den. Hiya, Jackson. The reason I... Well, as I live and breathe, Mary. I'd like to live, too, so breathe the other way. <laughs> you, doll. <laughs> Good. What do you want, Phil? Well, the reason I dropped over was well, hello, that... Hello, Phil. Oh, hi, Dennis. You want to buy a magazine? Dennis! <laughs> now, why don't you go home? Now, Phil, what is it? Well, look, Jackson, after the rehearsal yesterday, I got to thinking, and you said the program was too long, and you'd like to make some cuts. That's right. We'll have to take out about, oh, I'd say about two minutes. Yeah, well, that's what I'm getting at, Jackson. Rather than sacrifice any of my sparkling dialogue, uh, I can get the time out of my music. Really? Yeah, certainly. You see, I can cut the allegro movement of my orchestra number and just leave the pizzicato for the violins. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, you could. And then you see, if I have to, I can fade the last eight measures of pianissimo and segue to the andante. <laughs> well, what do you think, Mary? You're not going to get me into this. <laughs> Well, I think it's a very good suggestion, Phil, but we'll only do it if we're stuck for time, you know? Hey, Jackson. What? Hey, ain't it funny how we fool our audience and make them think that I'm a dumb guy and don't know nothing about music? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's show business. Yeah. You know, Jackson, sometime I'd like to play something classical just to show the people I can do it. Well, that, that would be a surprise, Phil. I, you know, what would you play? Oh, I don't know. Something by Rimsky-Korsakov or Beethoven or Schubert or Willie Hoppy. <laughs> Willie Hoppy? For Willie Hoppy, he's a billiard champion. What song did he ever write? Please don't chalk about me when I'm gone. <laughs> Filthy, you started out as a lousy band leader, and now you're the king of comedy, you dumb <laughs> you. <laughs> Mary, Mary, did you hear that? I'm still sick from Let Me Collie Your Sweetheart. <laughs> I don't blame you. Phil, do me a favor, will you? Take Dennis and go home. Okay, come on, Collier, let's be. Okay, Clyde. So long, Mr. Benny. So long. <laughs> you know, Mary, when I got out of bed, I thought I'd be able to relax today, but this house is worse than a bus station. Well, Jack, if you really want to have some fun, why don't you go to the Belmont Theater and see that new Lou Holtz, Burt Wheeler show, Merry-Go-Round? See, I got tickets to that for Saturday night, Mary, and I hear it's terrific. I'll tell you what. Let's go to a movie tonight, huh? What's playing? Well, I don't know. Let's go down to Hollywood Boulevard and take a look. Okay. See, where's my hat? Oh, there it is. Come on, Mary. Oh, for heaven. Now, who can that be? Come in. Oh, it's you, Don. Hello, Jack. I brought the sportsman quartet with me. I know, I know. Jack, uh, were you going out? Yes. Well, I'm so glad I caught you. The boys have a wonderful mm. idea for a commercial. 
Don, I've already got my hat on. I'm going but to... But, Jack, a... Jack, now, this idea is really terrific. I don't care how terrific it is. I'm not going to hear it now. I'm going out. But there's a part in it where you play your violin. I don't care... <laughs> my violin? <laughs> oh, hold my hat, Mary. What about the mo movie, Yasha? Well, this <laughs> Ad lived a line and then blew it herself. <laughs> Part of the line herself and then blew it. <laughs> I've heard everything now. Now, uh, this won't take long. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait till I get my violin down. Here it is. Okay, fellas, take it. LSM-MFT LSM-MFT Luck is a shirt that tastes better than all of the rest Luck is a made so much better they win every test That is a fact Yes, friends, a fact number was wonderful. Thanks for putting in a spot for me. Jack, if we're going to the movies, let's go. Okay. That you didn't ad lib. You read that very, very well. <laughs> Say, Don, would you and the sportsmen like to join us? We're going to see a picture. Well, thanks, Jack, but I've got to run along home and the boys have to rush downtown. Oh, that's right. They opened this week at the Biltmore Bowl. How'd you know? I booked them there, you know. <laughs> I figured they'd rather have that than my lousy Christmas present, you know. Well, come on, Mary. Let's go to the movies. Oh, oh, Jack, here's your hat. Hat? Yes, you put your violin on your head. Oh, oh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Come on, Mary. You know, Jack, Hollywood Boulevard always looks so pretty this time of the year. You're right, Mary. Santa Claus Lane is really decorated for Christmas. Oh, the air sure smells good tonight. Yeah, that rain we had really cleared things up. You know, the smog has been so heavy lately, you could almost cut it with a knife. You know, Jack, since the smog cleared away, I learned something very interesting about that six-story building on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. What about it? It's 12 stories. <laughs> no kidding. Here, Mary, let me take your arm while we cross the street. Well, Jack, you can't cross now. The light's against you. Never mind. Come on, let's go. But, Jack... Come on. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, brother, what you won't do since you joined the Blue Cross. <laughs> Blue Cross, Blue Cross, I was in a hurry. Now, come on, let's make up our mind about what picture we want to see. Well, I hear the Blue Veil is wonderful. Jane Wyman and Charles Lawton are in it. How about that? Well, all right, but I'm a little peeved at Jane Wyman. You know, she's been acting so stuck up since she won the Academy Award. Well, I've never noticed any change in her. Well, I have. A couple of weeks ago, she passed me on the street, didn't even say hello to me. Well, Jack, did she ever speak to you before she won the Oscar? Well, come to think of it, no. <laughs> but she could at least... Jack, Jack, look what's playing here at Grauman's Chinese. Golden Girl, and Dennis Day is in it. Oh, yes. Let's go in and see it. Okay. I'll get the tickets this time. <laughs> How many, please? Uh, two in the balcony. I'm sorry, we don't have one. Gee, that's funny. I always thought this theater had a balcony. So did I until the smog cleared. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Gee, I wonder what happened to all those people I sent up there. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know uh, Two regular seats, please Yes, sir Here you are Thank you Tickets, please Here you are You'll find seats in the center aisle Thank you Come on, Mary Gee, it's so dark in here I can hardly see That's all right, Mary Here comes the usherette with a flashlight May I help you, please? Yes, yes, we'd like two seats. Follow me. How far down? Oh, about midway. Yes, sir. Uh, center or on the aisle? Uh, in the center, please. Yes, ma'am. Gee, Mary, we're lucky. We came in during the travelogue. Here we are. Will these two seats do? Oh, they're fine. I'm so glad. Here, miss, let me help you off with your coat. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Now, let me help you with your coat, sir. Oh, there you are. Well, thank you. Now, pucker up. <laughs> pucker up? Yes. I'm going to kiss you. Here. Say, what, what is this? Since television, we're giving all the service we can. <laughs> well, sit down, sit down. <laughs> with heavy heart that we say farewell to the picturesque little town of Serrano. Beautiful Serrano, from whence the swallows came. Whence? Yes, whence. <laughs> Let's watch the show. <laughs> The feature's starting. Yeah. Gee, this woman's sitting in front of me. She's wearing such a big hat, I can hardly see anything. Well, ask her to take it off. Yeah, I will. Excuse me, madam, I can't see the picture. Would you please remove your hat? No, I won't! <laughs> hmm. Look, madam, all I said was... Shh, quiet! Jack, that lady's voice, uh, it sounded familiar. I know, I, I've heard it before, but I can't seem to remember. Quiet back there! I want to enjoy my son's picture! Jack, it's Dennis's mother. <laughs> Say, that's right. Well, I'm surprised that she's here. I thought she was out of town. Well, she came back. You see, the abalone diving season is over. <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Maybe if you speak nicely to her and tell her who you are, she'll take off her hat. I'll try. Excuse me, Mrs. Day. I'm Jack Benny. Who gave you the passes? 
<laughs> no one gave me passes. I bought my own ticket and I bought one for Miss Livingston, too. Well, ain't you the sporty one? <laughs> now look, Mrs. Day. <laughs> Cut out that talking. Jack. Jack, let's watch the picture. Well, all right. Oh, look. There's Dennis on the screen now. Gee, he's cute. Mary, are you sure we've come to the right picture? Well, certainly. Why? Well, look at the screen. Dennis is wearing the blue veil. You're looking at him through his mother's hat. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I wish I could see. Oh, Jack, stop complaining. There's a tall fellow sitting in front of me, too. It's me, Mary. Dennis, how come you're so tall? I'm sitting on my magazine. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Dennis, do you mean you've been sitting there all the time? Your mother's been fighting with me? Uh-huh. I spend my good money to see your picture, and you sit there and let your mother say the most awful... Ah, shut up! <laughs> what? You heard her. She said, ah, shut up! I'm not going to shut up. I came here to see a movie, and I'm not going hey, to... Hey, throw that bum out! What? You heard me, bum! Bum, who do you think you're talking to? You, and if you don't shut up, I'll punch you right in the nose. Well, I don't care if you do. I belong to the Blue Cross. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... Your armed forces are short of 300,000 pints of blood a month, a shortage that may cost us thousands of American lives. Uh, we know that you are going to give blood. We ask that you give it now. Call your Red Cross today. This is an urgent request. In the Los Angeles area, the telephone number is Dunkirk 45261. Dunkirk 45261. Remember, a gift of blood is a gift from the heart. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first, Lucky's taste better. Yes, there's better taste in Lucky Strike because Lucky's fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco goes into the cigarette that tops all five principal brands for quality. Lucky Strike. These are not just claims. They are facts that prove Lucky's are made better in every way. Facts verified by leading laboratory consultants. One of these, Froling and Robertson of Richmond, Virginia, reports, it is our conclusion that Lucky Strike is the best made of these five major brands. So don't be misled by the smokescreen of claims and empty promises made by other cigarettes. Remember the proven facts of Lucky Strike quality. Enjoy the mild, rich taste of fine tobacco in the cigarette that smokes smoother because it's made better. The cigarette that tastes better, Lucky Strike. You'll prove it yourself by trying a carton of Luckies today. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that finishes another program, and we'll come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I represent the National Radio Magazine, and on behalf of our readers, I want to present you with this award. Award? Yes, it's for meritorious service toward all the radio listeners in America. Why? What did I do? Here it is Thanksgiving week, and you didn't have one joke on your program about a turkey. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Good night, folks. This is Don Wilson reminding you to listen to your hit parade with Guy Lombardo every Thursday night, presented by Lucky Strike. Consult your newspaper for time and station. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. The Jack Benny program is heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>